All right, on to number seven, Bright Eyes. Uh, the X-Men hold a funeral for Gambit and uh, later go to Genosha to provide some aid to the injured citizens. And then meanwhile, Rhode is, you know, angry about Gambit's death. And um, she's trying to find Henry, Gyrick, and Baller of Dress. And then she flies around to, she goes to Captain America, which is really cool to see. We got a cameo of Captain America and General Thunderbolt Ross. And basically, Captain America knows where Gyrick is, but he doesn't want to do things um, not by the book. And as soon as he gets the thumbs up, he's going to go apprehend Gyrick and crush him on where Trask is. But Ro doesn't care about any of that. And then once she gets the location, she flies directly to Gyrick and she tries to absorb his memories to find where Trask is. But there's some sort of like other psychic character blocking her ability to absorb his memories. And uh, she just passes out. And later on, this mysterious person also kills Gyrick as well. And they all regroup together because in Genosha, Trask tells the X-Men through their jet that you should come to Madripoor. Uh, I'll explain everything. And I, I didn't mean to cause harm uh, or to cause the incident in Genosha. And he reveals that he's been working for Mr. Sinister as well. And then once they get there, Trask tells them about like a highly advanced Sentinel program that um, Mr. Sinister and the, this mysterious organization named OZT are working on and you know he's not with any of this and then he wants to jump off a building which road grabs him and then lets him down off the ledge of the building and then he dies kind of and uh this might be hinting at like road becoming a villain of some sorts uh against humans or siding with Magneto or just becoming like an anti-hero in general and uh later his death causes an advanced programming in him to activate and then he becomes a human sentinel hybrid which is also really um really shocking to see because you just hear like a sudden thud and it says eliminate mutants and then um yeah he just reactivates comes back to life and then casually blows up the building that the x-men are standing on and um they engage in this like mini fight and what was really cool i would say i really like that like morph is really really op i didn't really catch that until now um well i always knew it was op but like I just took in the extent of what his ability should do. Uh, he just turns into Crit Silver, and then we got like a Crit Silver cameo really quickly because he can turn into someone and then get their physical abilities uh, of the person that he turns into. So he turns into Crit Silver, and then now we can run fast. And uh, that was really like, because for a second I thought Crit Silver just randomly showed up from Madripoor, and he was like another hero aiding the X Men, but now it's just him. He just turns into Crit Silver, and um. Which makes you wonder, like, where did they see all these other characters, like, all these other people in the universe to turn into? Like, they must have crossed paths at some point. Anyway, um, yeah, so they engage in this, like, mini battle with the activated Bolivar Trask, and they're kind of losing. But Cable shows up and then disables uh, the Prime Sentinel with this, like, EMP sort of device. And then he lets them know that Mr. Sinister is working with someone named Bastion, and who's like much worse than Mr. Sinister, I guess. And later, Bastion, we see Bastion who is like in full. That is a mysterious person that killed uh, Henry Gyrick as well. And he is working with Mr. S uh, Mr. Sinister. And I'm also, I mean, after I finished watching the episode, I was really curious as to who Bastion is because he seems a little OP. I mean, if you're, I assume if you're capable of causing destruction like you did in Genosha, then you're like, you're definitely a big threat to be stopped. And um, it turns out Magneto is alive. He has Magneto locked up in some sort of basement. <laughs> and Bastion tells Mr. Sinister that Charles Xavier is actually alive. And he shows him through this like little TV. Uh, I don't know how he has that footage, to be honest. But yeah, he shows him this footage that, you know, Charles Xavier is alive. And um, let me cook, wait for my plan to be in motion. And um, yeah, that's that's basically it. That's where it ends. Um, I definitely like that one way more than Life, Death, Part 2. And uh, I would say it's like a mid-tier episode for what we've gotten so far. But it uh, definitely advances things in the story, for sure. And it's always a nice seeing Cable again. And, you know... Oh, yeah. Also, Cyclops realizes that Cable is Nathan. I actually thought there was going to be, like, a different way that that happens. Because, I don't know, he seemed really nonchalant about about it. Uh, he just said, um, oh, it's you. You survived. And then, you know, that's it. They just got along with, with, the, with the rest of, like, the story. But I, I do hope I see more of that, like, lost time between them. Like, even more than we get in the next episode, in episode 8. But, um, yeah, that's about it. Definitely enjoy this episode. But, yeah. Peace.